that Olga Mikelva and Manuel Gonzalo have prepared. We also have the uh, the, the, the honor to to chair and make comments by Professor Kei uh, Shai Shosep for this session. Uh, I would like to say some words about this uh, this this lecture series. Uh, this has been a, 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 an activity that uh, is in honor to Cliff Freeman, uh, who is the found founder, uh, the founding father of the modern uh, innovation studies. Uh, he was born uh, one hand, uh, one, one, this uh, centenary of his uh, birth. Uh, in he was born in 11 uh, uh, September of 1921. So we are kind of. Uh, having this in, in his honor. Uh, it is organized by few alumni of PhD academies uh, all over the world. And uh, we have uh, the, the possibility of count with a co-host by the uh, Merit uh, University of United Nations. Uh, also, uh, it's uh, near to say that uh, we have uh, in this uh, series lecture, 13 lectures, 38 speakers, and it uh, runs uh, for uh, a span of time of three months. It started in the in in, in January, and it will be finished by by April. Uh, we are thinking on another activities after that. Uh, uh, each lecture is. Uh, is prepared by uh, young researchers in their early careers and is discussed by senior scholars. So it's kind of a intergenerational activity. Uh, and uh, the objective of these lectures is to attract young, young blood to innovation system literature and to embolden the early careers researchers uh, and interdisciplinary scholars to use the innovation system framework in their researches. Uh, this is our team. All these faces are what uh, are have been here and will be in the next uh, weeks. And uh, uh, the, the, activity, the, the lecture of today will be uh, in charge of, as, as I already said, by Olga Mikiva and Manuel Gonzalo, and uh, the comments will be in charge of Keisha Shosa. Olga Mikiva uh, ha, uh, had a Marie Curie Research Fellow at the UCL Institute of Innovation and Public Purpose. She is PhD in Public Administration and Technology Governance uh, uh, from Talc Tech in Estonia, and also he he holds an MA in technology governance from Talc Tech, and he, host, he also had a study in Li Kuan Chu uh, Xuan School at the, uh, of Public Policy at Singapore. Uh, Manuel Gonzalo is researcher and teacher at the Universidad General de, at la Universidad Nacional de General Sarmiento and also at the Universidad General, the Universidad Nacional de Chilecito. He's also, he, he also belongs to the RedeCid, la, the Red uh, de Pesquisa de Rancho Sistemas Productivos Locais de Brasil, uh, where uh, he, he obtained his PhD degree in the, in, in, in the University of Rio de Janeiro. He has been a, researcher, a visiting researcher at the Center of the Development Studies uh, in GNU, India. He's also uh, part of uh, Globalix Networks, Lalix, and Red Mercur in South America. K. Shay Joseph uh, is very well known by, by you all of us. Uh, he's the president of the Globalix and he's founding uh, editor-in-chief of the Innovation and Development Journal, the Journal of Globalix Network. Uh, he actually is a the, uh, he, he's, uh, uh, currently the director of Gulati Institute of Finance and Taxation in, in India. 
Uh, he holds the Ministry of Commerce Professor at the Center of Development Study in Trivalum, Kerala, and uh, uh, is Professor of uh, Hawar Nalal Nero University. He has been consulting uh, in several uh, institutions uh, and uh, for several uh, countries like uh, in, in IT policy, like uh, Cambodia, Laos, Ma Myanmar, Vietnam, Thailand, and consultant of uh, UNTAC. So uh, this is what we are going to, to have today. This, this, uh, the, it's important to say that the, we are uh, having this uh, session uh, provided uh, by United Nations University of Maastricht and is uh, live YouTube streaming right now and is also recorded. Uh, so we are going uh, to give you the floor, Professor Keishe. Uh, and this, is, this is, will be the next session. <laughs> Good evening to all my friends and uh, thank you very much Veronica for that uh, excellent uh, setting for the today's lecture. Uh, we, I asked to begin with how much time we have. We, you said uh, the organizers have given something like uh, two hours. Uh, I think uh, I, have, I have a few things to say. Uh, I don't know how much time it will take, but then I think I can go up to something like eight to 10 minutes. But you know that professors and, uh, in India, uh, particularly economic professors have never ever succeeded in keeping their words. So there are always, there is a big risk of uh, overshooting my time, but I will try to control, my, control myself. First of all, to begin with uh, 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 the whole event. This is the sixth in the series of lecture uh, to celebrate the centenary year of uh, great professor Christopher Freeman. And uh, this, uh, he is one of the, I must say, the guiding spirit. I, I must say that his last contribution was perhaps an article for the opening issue of innovation and development. And this particular event, you know that this is, uh, uh, in a sense, I would attribute to uh, the group of uh, young alum, uh, the alumni or, or young scholars of Global X Forum, led by uh, uh, Dr. Ajesh, uh, who happened to be my own student, which uh, makes me extremely happy about that. And this essentially means something which says very elaborately about the uniqueness of this organization, GlobalX. This is a network that provides forum for everyone to express their ability uh, and any organization can grow if and only if, if there is unfettered opportunity to express and uh, their own, uh, the forum to express their ability. And this is, I would say that in that sense, GlobalX as an organization is in the hands of very strong young generation. And if you are, if young generation is driving an organization, that organization is, is, is bound to have an excellent future. So I congratulate Rajesh and all of you. Uh, and uh, of course, today we have got uh, two of the most, uh, I must say, uh, competent young, young uh, alumnus. I mean, uh, the two of them are really competent. And I know that our, alum our the Global X alumni are, all of them are smart. And uh, some, of, some of them are, all are equal, some are more equal, you know, you know something like that. This is what in Man's Worldly Goods, uh, uh, it is written a long time back. So all are smart, some are more smart. So we have got Olga and Manuel Gonzalo. They have already shown their, uh, their organizational skill last time, uh, organizing the pre-conference uh, workshop. You are all aware of that. That is about this. Second thing which I would like to, this I must say that uh, I, this gives give me an opportunity to reflect about uh, my own uh, my own meeting with uh, Professor Christopher Freeman. 
as early as in 2001, when I was uh, a professor in uh, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru University, and we had a project on industrial university interaction. And I was, uh, I, I went to uh, Helsinki, uh, what is called wider Helsinki for a conference and, uh, and uh, the, the one of my own uh, senior uh, professors over there, chairman of the department, Professor Ashok Parthasarathy, told that on your way back, you must go to Spru and meet Professor Christopher Freeman. In fact, he himself, he, he was a very close associate of Christopher Freeman. Of course, Ashok Parthasarathy himself was a scientific advisor to former prime minister. And on the way back, I went to Spru and I had the opportunity to meet Professor Christopher Freeman Essentially, I wanted to ask one question. We are interested in exploring industry university interaction in India. And what could be the approach? Because you know that we were all, our generation, most of us were trained in the neoclassical framework and the, we were very much worried about uh, KJ, please unmute yourself. KJ, KJ please unmute. Now, he didn't give me an answer. He told me, say, I mean, in an indirect way, he told me a great message that we should be giving to our saying that the framework is something which you should be deciding by himself. And he spent almost half an hour with me, wherein uh, he elaborately told about, I, about the innovation system framework. I never knew that the person whom I talked to at that time is such a great eminent personality. Then, then only after that, I started reading about him. And I have got a, a, a debt indebtedness to uh, Pari, Professor Pari Patel, who was my great host, and uh, Professor Ben Martin, and Professor Martin Bell, who came for, he wanted me to give a <coughs> seminar. And Professor Martin Bell uh, came and uh, participated in the seminar. I was talking about uh, perils of excessive export orientation of India's electronics and in India's uh, software industry. Anyway, now finally, so this remind this is my uh, very limited uh, uh, interaction with this great personality. So I feel extremely happy that uh, uh, you know we are. I mean, he, I had a, of course at that time Globalix was not born. Yeah, I'm talking about 2001. Now, finally, coming to the, the topic of the lecture, I should not, I know that you are not, I, I none of you are waiting to hear me, rather you are going to hear from our smart, uh, 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 smart uh, alumnus, uh, 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 Olga and uh, Manuel. So I think uh, the key pillar of innovation system framework to my mind is nothing but the institutional architecture that governs the interactive learning process which is at the core of innovation system framework that we, or the, the focusing device that we use. And that institutional framework, when we talk about, you know, uh, we have got, uh, uh, if you go by uh, Douglas North, it refers to the acts, the rules, the tradition, the custom, the practices that governs the behavior of economic agents in any economy or society. So given that, it's very much clear that the way in which economic, uh, the actors behave, that influence the outcome, that that behavior is in fact governed by the environment, all the institutional architecture. So when someone from the South, for example, when we are trying to understand the innovation process and particularly it's linked to development, in a, any context, any inquiry without due recognition of the institutional architecture, becomes uh, 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 an incomplete inquiry. So it is in this context that, you know, particularly when as we are trying to, I would say that there is low, I mean, the, the framework as such is evolved, the innovation system framework as such is evolved in the context of the experience of uh, developed countries. And there you have got much more uh, uh, mature, uh, institutional architecture as compared to develop, developing country context. And when we are trying to, uh, one, when we are trying to uh, emulate or rather adapt the innovation system framework to our local conditions, it is very important that you should have your own focusing device or rather what is called the, 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 the your, your attention on the local customs, your local practices, local traditions. And that becomes very important. And it is very important. It is in this context that particularly when you're talking about financing development, financing innovation, uh, particularly the acts, the rules that becomes very important. 
And it, for that matter, you are talking about interaction inter, inter, with any kind of learning. For, the, for that matter, if it is scientific learning as, or if it is uh, synthetic learning or scientific learning, or it is DUI mode of, learn, mode, mode of learning or STA mode of learning, even in understanding whichever direction, I think uh, institutional aspects are very important. That way, I must say that the, 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 the organizers have located a, 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 a very important aspect for today's lecture. And uh, I, 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 I'm very sure that this, uh, this particularly from, you have got two speakers, one from uh, uh, University College London and other from uh, uh, Federal University of Rio, the Latin American perspective, and as well as I am sure others will be complementing uh, and supplementing their insight through the chat box questions and uh, this thing. And uh, let, uh, I encourage uh, all of you to raise questions. And uh, please remember, in our kind of discipline, there is no one to take solution and give to your pocket, uh, from your pocket and give. Raise question, and raising question is in fact the first uh, step towards any uh, uh, informed inquiry. So let us make it a forum for raising questions and uh, answers may come, may not come. Don't bother about that. It could be uh, answered by our speakers or somebody else, or you yourself might find an answer later. So with these words, I uh, congratulate the organizers once again, and also welcome our speakers uh, to initiate the lecture. I suppose uh, Olga is going to start or Manuel is going to start? Manuel? Okay, Manuel is going to start. Okay, Manuel, please, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Well, a pleasure for me to be here to, to share this space with Olga that, and well, Olga and, and Rajesh that we uh, share the 2015 Globelix alumni also with Vero that we share a, a, a course uh, together and with KJ. Uh, well, I am uh, really involved with the Indian uh, development, so for me it's a, a pleasure and an honor to be here and clearly. Uh, as part of the Globelix community, uh, it is really nice this initiative, initiative and to have all these people here that uh, for us is really interesting and uh, it's a really nice space. Um, well, uh, with respect to the presentation that I will try to share now, um, Oh, are you watching it? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I have, uh, well, we have been uh, discussing during January and also in this uh, February around Freeman uh, and, and his contribution. And um, well, at, at the same time, uh, I have a uh, uh, use this opportunity to, to read much more uh, on Freeman and Freeman's work. Uh, there, there are also some uh, special issues that, for example, Dutrenitz and Sulz are uh, running in the innovation and development. I think that also Jose Casolato is organizing something with respect to the Freeman's uh, centenary. So this, this January was a rich and useful uh, time to, 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 to read Freeman and to discuss around Freeman. I hope that this uh, presentation uh, the, in the last uh, meeting, Bentake say that we, we sometimes we speak about Freeman, Nelson and Lundval as it's a, a team that they are uh, the, the same people and clearly they, uh, they are they are not the, the the same people and they have different uh, frameworks despite they share these contributions around the notion petition agenda so i i hope uh, that this contrib this uh, presentation uh, contributes to, to 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 frame a little uh, a little bit around uh, freeman's uh, online in this sense uh, well as uh, all we 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 I mean, my generation, that is a middle, middle, I mean, middle age generation, we did not uh, meet uh, Freeman, all, but we received uh, all these uh, 
stories in the sense that he he was a, a, an, an entrepreneur, an academic entrepreneur. He was a generous guy, and he, uh, despite he was a global north scholar, uh, he was much aware of the global south. So this is a uh, really interesting and really important uh, for for us. And in particular, uh, as a research agenda builder, yeah. Uh, Freeman also, I mean, uh, work a lot, for example, with uh, Dossi, Carlota Perez, uh, Lousa, and different uh, interesting people. So Freeman is also present in the, in the work of these people. Um, going to the presentation, um, I will try to, to discuss mainly on three uh, subjects of uh, Freeman, Freeman's work. Uh, discussion on, on long waves, uh, on national system of innovations, and then on STI policy. And then uh, I, would, I will try to give uh, some kind of Latin American or Global South view on these issues. Um, this, I take this title from a paper of uh, Rodrigo Arocena and Judith Sutz. A really nice paper that uh, it's about uh, in the sense of reading Freeman, yeah. Because during January I, I have been reading Freeman. Um, if we think, if we have to make an evaluation of uh, the contributions of the neo schumpeterian agenda to the economic literature, well, perhaps we we could discuss this, and uh, each one of us could have a different opinion. But I would say that uh, the idea, well, not now more, uh, more well known of uh, techno-economic paradigms that in Freeman works was more related at the, at the 1982 uh, book with technological systems is a main contribution of the neo schumpeterian agenda, not the Schumpeterian, but the neo schumpeterian agenda, yeah? Uh, also, the idea of national system of innovations. Yeah, we are here all around the globalist community. We all know this, and the approach of a systemic SDI policy. Yeah, and these three main contributions, uh, Freeman has been involved in these uh, three uh, main contributions, direct or uh, in an indirect way. Yeah, so I will try to to speak. Uh, First, around these uh, three main issues that I already said, then some uh, south southern approach to, to, to Freeman, uh, and then I will open some neo schumpeterian blends. I think that this is really important to, to, to not to know, but to, to deal with, 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 with which other agendas we, we can speak, and this is uh, an, an in an interesting issue because, as all we know, uh, the neo schumpeterian agenda also can be mixed with a really neoclassical framework. So we have to, to be aware of, of, this, uh, of these blends. Um, well, so one may in line of uh, Freeman's work. Uh, has to be with uh, this this idea of long waves, yeah, and this debate of on long long waves uh, clearly reemerged during the 70s and 80s, yeah, that was uh, the time that uh, Freeman makes different contributions on these issues, mainly from the 80s. And, and 90s. In this sense, the, 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 the historical context of the 60s and, and 80s, the Fordism was increasing, we, there was the emergence of the microprocessor. And uh, in the economic literature, the debate was around this Japanese uh, competitiveness. Yeah, so there was like these studies, for example, in the US that making, making US, in Brazil also there was a study. In, in a similar sense, that they um, were trying to understand uh, this Japanese competitiveness. And in context, the, the long wave approach and the long wave debate, uh, debate pre emerged. Yeah? And uh, clearly, the long wave debate is, I mean, big and extended and extended. But uh, we could, or I, I, I identified like one, one of works that are some kind of fundational works. 
mainly with on the TF, yeah, uh, th this was this idea of long cycles on productions and relative prices. Freeman discussed really well on this, for example, in the, in the book with Loza, there's a whole chapter on, on Kondratiev, and in different papers, he came back to, to this issue, yeah? Also, the, there was the approach of Kuznets around um, uh, cycles, but they, these, these were mostly uh, econometric or statistical works, yeah? Then we have another stream of, of works. Uh, we have the Schumpeterian clusters of radical innovations, yeah? Uh, it's a mix of a theoretical and also historical approach. We have one line of, of work that is mainly a Keynesian line of work with Gain, Skald, or Kalecki, that they, they mainly discuss or understand this relation between uh, demand and investments. Uh, and in, the, in, this, in this stream of, work, of works, uh, the work of Freeman, Dossi, and Carlotta, in some sense, dialogue both with the Keynesian and, of course, with Kondratiev, uh, Kondratiev and Schumpeter. Then, more, more near, we have this idea of Minsky, uh, of Minsky financial long wave super cycles. And we have another stream of, of literature. Uh, that has to be with, with more geopolitical, more long term, that is from Brodel, Baller, Stein, Ari, and all this literature on war systems. That uh, if we read um, Freeman's works, uh, we can see that uh, he, he was aware of these three uh, streams of works and he dialogued with these three streams of works. Um, but uh, going particular to, particularly to Freeman, uh, contribution. Um, the, the, the main, I mean, the, the first and um, uh, main I, I, idea in Freeman's works uh, after being working on research, on empirical research uh, on R&D in the England industry during the 60s and the, the 70s, uh, Freeman made this 1982 work on technology, technological systems. Yeah, and there was a discussion in particular. This a, a book I have the book here uh, on long waves. That Rosenberg he was really critical of this uh, long term uh, the, the, with the idea of um, uh, cycles uh, of growth. Yeah, so Rosenberg uh, have a, a septic uh, idea with of um, of the long waves. Then there was a contribution of Mensch and Mander from the Marxist uh, literature. And also uh, Freeman clearly dialogued with the Keynesian literature, particularly discussing the 70s and 80s unemployment crisis. Uh, not, not crisis, but employment uh, issue. I would say that um, a, main, you know, a main contribution of, of Freeman was to, 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 to try to broaden, broaden and also correcting uh, Schumpet Schumpeter's cluster of innovation idea, also the Kondratiev uh, long cycles, and uh, he has a, a really, I mean, uh, not diversions, but a, a discussion with the narrow R&D focus of the endogenous growth theory. And I think that this is really important, uh, this discussion, even today, yeah, because uh, some some neo schumpeterian agenda is even uh, really uh, narrow on this R&D debate. This was not the line of, uh, of Chris Freeman in, in, the, in his different works. In terms of methodological, in methodological ter terms, uh, he clearly stayed for a recent history approach from, this is the line also from Schumpeter and all the neo schumpeterian agenda. And uh, he speak on this idea of long-term way of thinking. And uh, he mainly take this from Bernal, who was one of his uh, teachers, and also Andes, yeah? And this uh, long-term approach uh, was really present in the different words of, of, of Freeman. Clearly, um, Another or a parallel uh, main contribution, contribution was uh, this uh, idea of going to a systemic understanding of innovation. We all know this, uh, but in particular, in particular, uh, mainly from example from the SAFO project, uh, 
uh, he discussed on this discussion on supply side, demand side, and introducing the idea of a systemic approach. Also, uh, starting with this Schumpeter 1, Schumpeter 2, and Schumpeter 3 uh, approach. And clearly, this, the institutional level, uh, even though he, uh, he does not. Uh, he was not so strong on this, but he clearly recognized recognize that the institutional level is a level of conflict, for example, of a relation with, of salaries or unemployment. And uh, this is an issue that we, we have to, to give account. Uh, in particular, the 1982 book with uh, Soechi and Clark, he, he introduced in one chapter these uh, new technological systems. Yeah, it's interesting that, that in the 1982 contribution, also uh, Dossi published in Research Policy the paper of technological uh, paradigms. And uh, they were uh, clearly working together at SPRU. So we, we have here some kind of a common share, yeah? And in some sense, also, we could say a, a dispute in terms of this idea of a, a, of a broadening the idea of technological paradigms. In, in this 92 work of Freeman, he, uh, they introduced this idea of new technological systems. And uh, what we understand for new, new technological systems. The, the main importance, not only of um, neither um, invention, also innovation, but a, a main relevance of diffusion to push the cycle. Yeah, uh, He works really much on this idea of the bandwagon effect in the terms of the diffusion of the uh, innovations uh, in different sectors. I mean, the, to push growth, uh, we, the, 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 the idea of innovation had to be broad enough. Yeah, it, it, it had to affect uh, different interrelated, interrelated industries, uh, not a marginal innovation will, put, uh, will push uh, uh, growth. And clearly, uh, the institutional aspect ha has a role here because the institutional aspect uh, or the, the, the institutional setting define the standards, the legal settings, the, regu the regulations, the policies. So the institutional aspect could promote or not to promote diffusion clearly. Um, and at the same time, this uh, with the emergence of a new technological system, uh, there, there's, there's, there, it's not, this could be stable, but there could be tensions because there are winners and losers. There are sectors that wins and sectors that lose. So this is an issue to, to have in, a, in, in, a, in, in, in mind. And in the 1982 work, they uh, explicitly speak about autonomous investment in a line that they are uh, clearly dialog dialoguing with Keynes. This line of, of research was clearly um, really developed by Carlotta and Dossi. Yeah? And nowadays, then I will come back uh, to this discussion. We have a uh, Mazzucato with the, with the idea of green growth also with Carlotta, that in some sense, it's a continuation of uh, the idea of technological systems, then further uh, developed by both Carlotta and Dossi but with a pioneer role of, of Freeman. And this is important for, for, for us from the Global South, that it was really clear in, in Freeman that um, uh, there was not an idea of convergence. There was mainly an idea of diversions. Uh, so uh, the, te the technological distribution is not uh, homo homogeneous. And there are leading countries, and there are late uh, latecomers, and there are developing countries. So uh, the the process of growth and development is uh, more related to a to an unequal process, a divergence process, than a convergence process. And in in, re in relation to this, well, this is how the I, I have these red lines. I don't know what this is, this is, but it's okay. Um, well, this is how the, they work in some, in different, this is, we, we all know this uh, treatment that uh, Freeman and Perez and Loza make, but uh, then I will, I will uh, advance with this idea of divergence 
to a national system of innovations. And uh, the 1982 paper that was published in the Globelix uh, 2003 with, well, uh, Bentake was uh, really uh, op 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 opportune to, to publish this, this paper is really illustrative on, the, on how um, Freeman understands uh, national system of innovations. And, and, and he understands national system of innovations with a clear and uh, direct um, relation with list. This was clearly then uh, further developed by Bentake, but uh, in, the, in, the, in the Freeman approach, there, uh, there uh, in this 1982 paper, you will see that the, 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 the reading that he makes on list is really in deep and he takes different uh, uh, things from, from, from list. In this sense, the national system of innovations clearly uh, have an idea of infrastructure, yeah, that perhaps nowadays we, we, are, we, we do not have this so much in the agenda. Also, uh, this mental idea in a, in a debate with the avoid technical change, yeah, that is the mainly growth theory deals with avoid technical change. So we have to have this in mind because the cycle is mainly a debate on avoid technical change. And the, National System of Innovations is, is, is a different uh, conceptual uh, device to deal with this. Then also from here, uh, from Latin America, uh, Jorge Katz uh, works on this, for example, on this issue. Uh, clearly, Freeman was aware and uh, understand the National System of Innovation as uh, the non-price factors of competitiveness in, a line with, in line with, Ka with Caldor, and uh, here, well, it's a, a well-known debate uh, for us, this discussion on sectors and nations. I, I would say that uh, uh, F F Freeman mainly works on nations, on comparative national system of innovations. And he understands that there are strong technical leader countries and, that, and this cannot be adjusted by the exchange rate, yeah? <laughs> we have uh, nowadays, like, at least in Latin America, some consensus yeah, that the, the, the development is to have a competitive exchange rate. And we that work on uh, this type of uh, institutional building, we have to, 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 to be aware that um, national system of innovations is much more than a competitive exchange rates. Um, well, then, Clearly, institutions for, capabi for, for capabilities and innovation creation and diffusion, well, this was clearly really worked by Bentak, Johnson, and uh, different scholars. Uh, there we have different works on diffusion of, of Freeman, different the works on the Schumpeterian competition. The, there's a 1997 conference that was, was then published that is really interesting in uh, discussing the Schumpeterian competition. Also, for example, this 1991 paper on networks of innovation, uh, recognizing the idea of the or, or, of the, or the power of networks. Uh, clearly, the the work of, of Freeman on the on national system of innovation, for example, then Lastres made uh, his her PhD thesis uh, with with Freeman on on, on Japan. Also, this uh, give account of the discussion of the 80s. And here, I think that the, this last point, there is a meant for, for us, and it, it is still in, in the agenda, and, and it, it will continue in the, in the discussion. That clearly, uh, Freeman understand that uh, he, uh, the, the discussion of innovation or stands not for uh, technoglobalism. But say the idea of national system of innovation have uh, or there is a risk to be uh, close related to uh, to national to methodological nationalism or nationalism methodological, in the sense that we all know that the nation is a really a really relevant uh, uh, def definition and, and concept, but there are networks that are um, rational and also supranational. There is a paper, for example 
from Freeman the, about the different levels, these continental, national, and subnational uh, innovation systems. So uh, Freeman was really aware of this tension, and we still have this tension. I mean, Chesne discussed this tension with uh, the idea of multinational firms, globalization. As we all know, Bentake uh, and the Globalist Committee have given a discussion on this uh, blend on a national system of innovations and uh, global value change. I remember the, I think that it was 2015 Cuba of, of Globalic, there, there were different uh, round tables around this discussion. And I think that this is still an, an open agenda in the sense of how can we uh, blend the national system of innovation in order to avoid a, methodo a methodological nationalism. And in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the case of Freeman, uh, he, he was really used to this comparative perspective on, on national system of innovations, and also um, recognize the, the relevance, for example, of uh, the interstate competition, in particular military and defense sectors for national system of innovations. Uh, this is a really re relevant issue uh, clearly today. Um, well, in a third, uh, a third uh, subject of Freeman works, <coughs> that of course it is related with uh, the idea of national system of innovation, the idea of a broad and systemic understanding of STI policy. And the sense, in the sense that uh, Freeman was clearly an, illum an illuminist, uh, um, but uh, he believed in, the, in science. He was also aware that uh, we can't solve all the economic and social problems with STI policy. So we have to be aware of the limits of, of uh, STI policy in order to recognize what we can do and what we can expect and what we cannot expect to solve with STI policy. And at the same time, to interrelate STI policy with the other policies of the of an state, yeah, fiscal policy, trade trade policies. I see sometimes in the in the contem com contemporary agenda a really narrow focus on some puntual aspects of the STI policy, but they are not related with the with the general framework or the general, the general setting of a country. And this is really a uh, work <laughs> by, by Freeman with this idea, for example, of coupling mechanism, the idea of institutional and sector, sectoral linkages, yeah? the challenge of the linkages that we have to have uh, thinking on, on STI policy. Uh, at the same time, uh, clearly, STI policy is much more than R&D. It is an institutional and organizational and social factors of, of competitiveness. And this idea that it is no, not only invasion and innovation, but also diffusion, and this for, uh, for us in the Global South. Uh, also, he has focus on some kind of type of, uh, uh, of enterprise such as the multinational enterprise. He also discussed on this idea of infant and teenage industries. Uh, he speaks of different ideas on Schumpeter 1, 2, and 3. And he also stands on this idea of missions and societal, societal challenge, in particular in the last paper, in the last work of, of Freeman, with this uh, idea of, of green uh, of, of the green uh, paradigm. So, to 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 sum to sum up uh, on this uh, idea, I I, I I mean my main objective was to to, to pass the idea that uh, Freeman have, have have a main role on broadening the the agenda on on on, on STI, yeah, uh, going from a narrow and linear and, and the focus mainly. Uh, really related from the endorsement of growth theory to a historical institutional and conflictive understanding of innovation, stating some dialogues with the Keynesian literature that then clearly was followed by Carlota Perez, Dossi, and also nowadays Masucato and different uh, scholars that we all uh, 
perhaps no. Um, also, this idea of going from the science push, demand pull, to a broad, broad, and when we, when we say broad, we say to understand the historical aspects of uh, societies, yeah, and national system of innovations, and uh, also in the case of the of in the methodological aspect, he went from. Uh, the, the idea of the geometric or the econometric approaches in the case of, of the long waves to reason here. Yeah? This is also relevant. And this Schumpeter 1, Schumpeter 2, and Schumpeter 3, that it is clearly open. Well, but uh, what about reading Freeman uh, from, from the South? And I would say that. Um, well, mainly speak about Argentina and Brazil, that are the two main countries that I know. Um, but then I will say something about Latin America in general terms. Uh, well, Freeman was a really close friend with Amil Carrera, what, that was a main, uh, a main uh, scholar on the uh, science and technology policy uh, debate in Latin America. 1968 or 69, uh, Amir Carrera was exiliated and he was received at SPRU. And then uh, Amir Carrera was living in Brazil uh, in the Unicamp and he received Freeman different times. And, and in, also, Freeman was, uh, he likes to bird watching. And uh, the son of, of Amil, the daughter of Amil Carrera, Alejandra, takes uh, Freeman to, to do bird watching at the San Pablo uh, Zoo. Also, uh, in this line, um, Jorge Katz introduced the work of, um, of Freeman in Argentina. It was a seminar in the Instituto Torcuato de Tela in 1969 that Freeman was her. And then this line of works comes here in Argentina with Chunoski, Gabriel Choguel, uh, and Andres Lopez, and well, nowadays much more people work this. But what, uh, Freeman has a close, uh, a friendship relation with the Latin American scholars, and Freeman was here different times. So the, inf the influence and interaction between Freeman and the Latin American uh, uh, scholars was mutual. In Brazil, well, clearly the Universidad, Universidad of Campinas edited different books of uh, Freeman and all of the, of the neo Schumpeterian agenda. And there was a seminar in 1982 that Freeman was uh, there uh, presenting a, a paper. Also, well, clearly the Globalix uh, 2003, uh, the paper of 1982, last three PhD thesis, for example, on Japan, on Japan that was oriented by 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 Freeman, uh, and uh, nowadays all the agenda of the Unicamp and UFR Shota universities have a main influence of the Neon Schumpeterian and the Freeman. Uh, work. At the general level in the in Latin America, we have different works speaking particularly on Freeman. For example, the work of uh, Rodrigo Arosena and Judith Suits of, of 2015 is really a nice piece, of, a nice paper. Also, a uh, work of uh, Elena Lastres and Casiolato 2017. Bellio has written also different works, and clearly the Lalix works and seminar are oriented on the Freeman in particular, I lay around these three um, issues or subjects that I have been uh, speaking about. Clearly, the, the line of thinking of Previsch, but mainly uh, developed in, in historical terms by Furtado, uh, have a, a long wave approach from a, periphery, uh, from a peripheral country. Yeah? So we can, uh, in terms of methodological, uh, methodological term, the terms, there is a, an agreement but the vision of these scholars <coughs> from Latin America uh, is a vision from a peripheral country. Also, there are int interesting works of Ignacio Ranchel from Brazil on this idea of techno-economic uh, techno paradigms and dual models of development. There are like two books on this for, uh, from, Ranch from Ranchel, all the work of Carlota Perez, 
the, uh, the contributions of uh, Maria de Gonzalez and Tavares on trends and cycles also goes on this line. This uh, national system of innovation, the broad line of uh, understanding, is particularly present of, in the agenda of the Red Seas. And the idea of societal challenges is, is present in, for example, in the work of Suits and, and Dutrenit. And uh, clearly, in, the, in, partic in particular, in the STI policy, uh, Amilcar Herrera's idea of uh, implicit and explicit uh, policies um, uh, is, I think that this, it is present in Freeman's dialogue. Perhaps the Sabatos triangle is uh, an antecedent of the systemic approach. And well, we, we have all these uh, plucked uh, line of, of thinking that also discuss with uh, and interact with, with Freeman. I don't know how I am with the time. You're getting old. I think you are, yeah, maybe two more minutes if you are okay. Okay. So, well, this is more a more uh, practical, a more, I mean, uh, this is an work. Uh, I am working on this and I am trying to understand this uh, the emergence of the 5G paradigm in the, in, in, in the global south. And clearly, <clears throat> uh, we have different uh, Freeman contributions that we can uh, introduce and, and and used to discuss this issue, but I will not discuss, I mean, uh, now because I will give more space to Olga and all the other uh, uh, comments. And to, to finish, uh, I will state some lines of, of, of work that can, it's an open agenda clearly, but it's related to what, which blends we could have uh, on the contemporary and future new Schumpeterian agenda. Well, this idea of a uh, recent history, okay, recent history, but which blends or concept or con of conceptual uh, works we uh, uh, are we going to to have? Where to publish this rec uh, this recent history? It's not so easy for young scholars to go uh, with no econometric works for uh, different journals. Clearly, innovation and development is a much more open space, but not the whole, uh, to, 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 to publish in the top journals, you need a, a much more work on econometric. Also, the idea of a national system of innovations and geopolitics, I think that this is a main line of research, and uh, perhaps it's, it is not so explored, in particular, the different supranational, national uh, levels. And well, we are in the middle of a clear uh, main dispute between the US and China, and the Global South have to have a, an approach on this. Uh, then the idea of demand-led growth and neo uh, schumpeterian uh, agenda, this was clearly um, pushed by Freeman, then uh, Carlota, then Dossi, and I understand that we, uh, we need to, 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 to further develop this line of, of research. Uh, also, well, all the agenda on financing that Olga will, will, will speak uh, on this, institution as a muscle for growth uh, and not to have a, a naive and in some sense a West bias approach on institutions in the sense that, for example, if we look at the, uh, the process of a uh, building of the Indian uh, pharma uh, industry, it was a process uh, clearly where patents were not so respect and the upgrading process was a process of uh, appropriation and not uh, so well performed or well uh, behaved uh, in the West literature terms. And also uh, with relate, uh, relation to the global South, which is the role of multinationals, multilateral organism and capital flows, how, this, how the capital flows affect the process of innovation, yeah? Uh, the, our, a problem that we have, and for example, is it not much present even in the works of uh, uh, Mariana Mazzucato, the, the, the idea of external restriction and foreign exchange limitations for our countries is a main issue. We cannot uh, make uh, go to the moon if we don't have uh, US dollars to import some basic good in, in Argentina. Um, this mission-oriented policy uh, 
mixing high tech uh, industry. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's okay for it's it's okay for me. Uh, then we will have more questions. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you, Manuel, uh, for uh, that eminently uh, uh, eminent articulation of how the contribution of uh, Christopher Freeman uh, in terms of giving life to innovation as a, a process, as well as linking innovation to the lives of the people, and particularly people from the south. And I was, I'm happy with, I'm, I, will, I wanted to stop you in between. The, you brought India, you being, you're having written such a wonderful PhD thesis on India. I was thinking, where is India from Manuel? So I'm happy that uh, you brought in India at the end. And uh, I don't want to continue for long. Uh, may I now uh, invite um, Olga Mikivia for to for her uh, uh, contribution. Hello, everyone. Um, could you signal me if you see my PowerPoint? Yes, very much. All right. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, uh, first of all, thank you very much, KJ, Manuel, uh, Veronica. It's, it, it's a pleasure to see so many friends. And uh, I do miss our annual gatherings at the conference and that were at some point decided to be uh, every second year. And then, of course, nowadays we are confined to the limits of or possibilities of technologies, <laughs> depending how you look at it. Um, I. Uh, I see so many uh, friends in this call and, and I would perhaps allow myself to start with a, um, with a life anecdote, but not in a sense that it's funny story, but in the sense that um, Freeman's legacy uh, was absolutely important, not only in terms of theories or not in terms of research um, and conceptual work that academics um, have been working on, but but also to the actual um, reform of institutions that are existing to support R&D. And, and that anecdote um, involves my, my dad, my father, who, who was an aspiring uh, PhD candidate in sociology. It was a very new field of science evolving in the 80s in the Soviet Union during the perestroika times. And he was working in the, uh, one of the national research institutes and uh, there was a lot of um, a lot of uh, new ideas there. Uh, the whole uh, the new winds were blowing, and of course the system. There was a lot of discussion among especially young scientists and intellectuals about how to reform the the, the, the system of a central planning towards market economy. And of course that is it involved a lot uh, R and D institutions. And then um, apparently. They, um, they went on a number of trips to UK and, and many, many, many years later, uh, when my father was moving from his apartment, he gave me some books because they were in English and these books and one of the books that he gave me was Freeman's uh, text on uh, uh, industrial um, uh, organizations. And then um, that was way, way after I completed my master's degree. But then he told me that we never talked about it, but then uh, my dad told me that, well, uh, it was important contribution to how they also discussed the reform of R&D uh, system, institutions, and of course, Freeman's and, and that notion of innovation being essentially evolutionary, collective social process, of course, played a lot of role in um, how uh, the reforming of institutions were designed. So that was a, a kind of personal <laughs> introduction. Uh, but to link it with the presentation, um, I, I think I would be more uh, focusing on that policy dimension um, or policy institutions. Um, and therefore, and, and also I would like to talk about uh, finance and financial institutions and particularly governance. And, and the overall aim of my uh, presentation and my research work is to bring together that evolutionary notion of innovation, learning, competence building that was very well, well articulated in the uh, economics and innovation studies. And of course, largely associated with uh, Chris Freeman, but also in other 
his followers and other scholars, and to bring it together with the notion that we have of public policies, public bureaucracies, public governance and capacities of states to implement policies. So that's the overall um, aim of my um, presentation today. Um, and because uh, a lot of inspiration that we researchers, despite that we are in um, academic institutions, of course, we cannot, uh, we witness a lot of um, discussion nowadays about how to finance post COVID recovery. And depending on how, whether you're optimistic about it or pessimistic, or you're still figuring out, uh, is it that we have a wonderful uh, opportunity not to waste another crisis, uh, or whether you believe in a very strong past dependency and uh, taking a more uh, pessimistic approach. Um, yet it's absolutely impossible not to talk about the direction of the post-COVID recovery growth, but particularly its financing. And here the discussion is quite multifaceted. So for example, uh, just if, well, for example, UN, uh, Commission for Trade and Development uh, has been actively advocating for debt relief, greater cooperation, more digital world, so innovation-led growth, um, shorter and more regional value chains to make our regional and local economies more resilient. Um, and um, at the same time, at the same time, um, well, quite a mainstream uh, media, the economist writes, well, but actually look, uh, some countries are tightening too far and too soon. So there are also among um, policy elites, if I may use the term, uh, among policymakers, there also, I, I, um, I hear that the conversations has been also going well, but where, how, how, where did we, well, shall we get the money? <laughs> and therefore, no, we need to stimulate private investment and uh, we need to be very conscious of our you know, budget deficit. So there is also very, um, very possible a risk of extending that intellectual and ideational discourse of austerity and balanced budgets towards the times of post COVID recovery plans. Um, here, I just put, uh, it looks a bit uh, patchy, but I just wanted to fit uh, maybe too many things on one um, thing. On one slide. Well, a recovery plan for Europe, uh, quite, um, quite infamous and very big uh, recovery resilience facility was uh, discussed for a long time. And, and finally, uh, the press release, I think, uh, yeah, from uh, basically from yesterday, uh, the European Council adopted the regulation and there are billions of euros that, that are now decided and agreed to, to channel towards um, green and digital transition, sustainable resilient growth. Um, a lot of other um, national, supranational, global organizations, uh, policy bodies, uh, third sector organizations has been very, have been very vocal about rethinking, about um, claiming and advocating for the strategic coordination between fiscal, for example, and monetary policy, about the strategic roles that, let's say, public development banks can um, uh, play in, in, in reconfiguring the financial systems that, well, led us to where we are. Um, and, and not only developments, but, but uh, public financial institutions as such. Here, I made um, another evidence, piece of evidence from the newly um, appointed president of European Central Bank, um, which have been, has been quite vocal recently open um, about uh, Christine Lagarde, uh, who has been very open about uh, the strategic coordination between uh, fiscal policies, structural policies, monetary policies. But again, um, it's hard to disagree, right? I mean, it's very hard to say, oh, no, 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 wait, what are you talking about? Or are we talking about institutional revolutions there? I mean, obviously these are all great things. And here there is another slide where we have a wonderful a group of wonderful female economists who also come from um, um, their research 
uh, and um, uh, advocacy work complement each other very well. We, we all know uh, Carlota Perez, we, we all very know uh, Mariana Mazzucata, Stephanie Kelton, who wrote a wonderful uh, The Myth of Deficit, um, Kate Raworth with Donut Economics, and we have Esther Duf. So we, um, we talk about sustainable green resilient innovation led just and inclusive recovery. We talk about challenge driven, aspirational, participative policies that are not only used at the times of crisis, but we are talking about laying the foundation for our long-term economic and technological trajectories. And at the same time, um, the policies that we are promoting, and, and, and there is this consensus about, we do need different institutions. We do need a different take on the role of public policies if we want to ensure green, sustainable, resilient, innovation-led, just inclusive growth in general. And at the same time, but policies are not isolated from governments. They're not isolated from the public agencies, which we are urgently calling from, um, you know, for designing and implementing those policies. And here we have uh, the strain of literature that does not always make a very um, full-bodied presence, if I can put it that way, in the economics or economics of innovation or innovation development discussions. And this is particularly precisely the, the literature on public policies, on state policy and administrative capacities. And these concepts have been developed um, uh, quite well. And there is a lot of, um, there is a lot of uh, work and wonderful scholars working on these concepts. Um, Therefore, my argument here is that rebuilding and redefining, sorry for the typo there, redefining public-private alliances and partnerships, it's not only in terms of investments, but if we also want to make our policies more participatory, right? For example, as mission-oriented innovation also assumes, um, it's, it also means that we have to look at the capacities of uh, public authorities, public governments to engage and also on the capacities of public sector or third sector to engage in participatory policies. Um, well, as I already mentioned that it was that intellectual tradition of defining innovation process that are closely associated with the ASPRU unit uh, and the, it, we may also call it European intellectual tradition of innovation because there was also scholars working in the US um, and there's a wonderful series of articles describing actually those differences. So our intellectual tradition that follows from a 60s, 70s developing Europe, it's about uncertainty, dynamic, collective and social process that embodies innovation. And therefore we're talking about institutional setups that can either foster or hinder innovation, development and growth. Well, um, the motto or the logo of our research institute directed by Professor Mazzucato is that innovation is also political. And it's not just about uh, China US question. It's not just about Huawei versus uh, Swedish Ericsson. It's not just about that. It's because the technological trajectories, the choices that we make are also defined and actualized by policies, bureaucracies, and we can also talk about general political economy of development and innovation. This leads me to another point that if there, were, there are institutional setups, we obviously can talk about the public governance of innovation and development. What is that share of a public policies in directing those institutional setups and those institutional configurations that again can either foster that innovative discovery, financing of innovation, um, the STI sectors, or it can also similarly hinder. And we can talk also about, we can bring the example of the Soviet Union or that planned economy that becomes, became so static. Um, therefore, at the same time um, here, I would like to focus even more narrow and would bring in that financing policies as part of governance of innovation and development. Um, here, 
um, if we start talking about financing aspects, a lot of studies, a lot of discussions, they start obviously with Schumpeter, uh, although he was not the only one who wrote about financial aspects of innovation process. But I thought it, for the sake of time, I thought it could be a good starting point uh, and also very, um, perhaps resonate with, with all uh, very well, very quickly. And um, there are different interpretations of to what extent Schubiter actually elaborated on financial aspects of innovation. And here, uh, Carlo de Perez would say that, uh, well, he actually did, but not so extensively as he elaborated on entrepreneurial discovery on that entrepreneurial capital E. Um, and that led to a lot of um, research neglecting the financial aspects. And then she goes further and saying, well, but the finance is always the speculation. It's essential for uh, creating those technological bubbles. Um, and uh, it also, it's necessary essentially. And she places, very, she places that development very well in her theory of techno-economic paradigms. A colleague of mine who wrote a whole PhD, uh, Benjamino Caligari, um, he argues, that he, he dedicated his entire PhD to looking at tracing the um, mentioning of uh, capital and financing in Schuchter's work. And he argues that, well, on contrary, uh, actually the neglection of finance, uh, types of financing innovation literature, owes to misinterpretation. In fact, all the financing aspects were all very well elaborated to Schuchter's work, but uh, well, um, it just was neglected. And then uh, Leonardo Burlamaki, um, an economist from uh, University of Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, um, he would say, "Well, you can." Um, he would he would dis he would disagree with Benjamino, who would say, "Well, uh, actually, yes, the the Schumpeter indeed did not elaborate. He gave us hints, uh, and not only in financing, but also, for example, on the state role." in economic development and his recent paper looks at um, state entrepreneurship in the case of China, when uh, Chinese government essentially is uh, that uh, entrepreneurial state, including in, in a sphere of financing. Uh, here I bring the, also the example of neo Schumpeterian manifesto. It was published in 2006. Well, that says that, well, indeed, we don't really look at, um, at the financial dynamics to the same extent as we look at the entrepreneurial and knowledge creation dynamics in the innovation studies. Um, as I already mentioned, Schumpeter himself called the banker, or uh, we can also rephrase, well, the external financing or credit-based financing, he called him an effort of capitalism. Uh, then was the Minsky, his student, his PhD student, who uh, I wouldn't say borrow, but of course he he um, he he put he took Schumpeter's ideas and 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 um, and said, well, but actually financial firms also innovate. Uh, they're also business firms. It's just that they innovate for the sake of circumventing financial regulations, and it's all this. Um, never catching up game and financial regulations will be always a little bit too behind because they are always reactive. Um, and financial firms will always have that incentive to innovate um, for this very reason. And he generated, um, he suggested the financial fragility hypothesis that says, well, the financial systems are inherently fragile and this financial innovation is one component of that. Um, then there are also there were studies and works that tried to synthesize and, and put together the uh, the conceptual work of Keynes, Schumpeter, and Minsky, especially when it comes to uh, socialization of investments, which uh, features prominently in Keynes' work, and then we when we combine it with the Schumpeterian theory of innovation. But also when we put their Minskyan conceptualization of money manager capitalism or how financial system evolve and interact and financial innovation, then we have 
uh, a very nicely uh, synthesis that, for example, Mariana Mazzucato and Randall Ray published, or um, another work by, by uh, uh, Bella Fiore. Um, a little bit earlier, we have Wurlamek um, and Gregel, who, who argues that, well, the, because innovation is inherently uncertain, that additionally contributes to the uncertainty and, for, and instability or fragility of the whole development process. It's not just about that uh, certain technologies or technological discoveries will, um, uh, will be more successful than others, but it's also about that very intimate connection between innovation in the real sector and innovation in the financial sector. And, um, and uh, the, 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 I call it uh, the um, uh, Schumpeter-Minsky synthesis, if I may say so. So they argue that um, by synthesizing those, those uh, concepts, uh, financing of innovation in the context of development is even more uncertain. Uh, then Linda Doe describes or maybe transcribes Keynesian, um, Keynesian um, uh, concepts of effective demand um, and socialization of investment. She talks about positive disposi disposition to face uncertainty. So basically um, the investor, the banker, the private investor, whoever is only willing to invest or to face that uncertainty um, only when there is certain confidence. And of course we know um, that uh, Keynes uh, wrote on the role of public authorities to influence that confidence. Or Minsky also wrote about big government, big bank. Um, and then we have Mariano Mazzucato, who very boldly and very straightforwardly says that, well, we also have to remember that finance is not neutral that in fact, the types of financing affects the types of economic activities that are supported and that are realized. And finance is another uh, factor very powerful that can set there for the direction to innovation. Um, and therefore, I, not only entrepreneurial discovery, but also finance can help uh, or hinder uh, the shape of certain technological trajectories. And from here, again, I come to Leonardo Berlamacchi in his joint work with Rani Kuttel that brings the notion of financial governance, that they argue that when we look at the process of development, that there are two crucial elements, financial governance and technological innovation that define economic trajectories. And they do not take, they do not uh, follow the linear process, which sometimes um, the authors of catching up um, uh, conceptual work on, let's say, late, late development, there is a sense that they're talking about catching up, but then um, catching up with, let's say, with the Western countries. But but actually, if we, uh, Bordamek and Gattel argue that actually when we look at the trajectories of different countries, it's not the linear. There are different vectors of development and, and, and the history of different countries demonstrate that. And they call it the leapfrogging. But the main point of the article is that the financial governance plays an important role there, not only science and technology or economic policies. Um, therefore, my, um, um, my focus here is to again emphasize that financial policies should not be viewed or financial governance should not be viewed as only actualization of industrial or innovation policies. They're not subordinative to, let's say, um, economic planning agencies or ministries of economy. Uh, but at the same time, um, the histories of post-World War late industrializations or catching up industrialization gave us the idea that um, economic planners or industrial bureaucrats, let's say, take uh, the famous studies of a uh, meeting in Japan, take the studies of the Asian tigers. Um, they gave us the sense of the dominance of the technocrats that were in charge of economic planners and um, uh, um, 
public research uh, uh, technology institutes. But actually, uh, there are a few studies who also argue that, well, if you look at um, financial policies at the time, there were also different takes on how to finance the growth. And there were different institutional setups that were decided and there were different priorities um, taken by, by, by respective governments. For example, there were dis the discussion was whether growth with equality or growth first. And for example, there are studies comparing South Korea and Taiwan and, and the, in Korean example, the growth was prioritized while inflationary pressures pressures were not that important but in Taiwan for political reasons the growth with equity played important role and the more gradual liberalization for example of the 80s and 90s in the financial sector ha what happened in Taiwan vis-a-vis -vis very drastic reforms in Korea and that of course there were there are various reasons for that but the um, um, there was important role of a wide and broad consensus among key financial elites in Taiwan that contributed to that policy course taken. And by key financial elites, I mean uh, the key uh, financial agency, central bank, Ministry of Finance, and uh, nowadays it's also um, financing supervisory authority. Um, there, at the same time, when we talk about financing of innovation or financial governance, um, there are a lot of very informative and rich studies um, that are uh, located in the history of financing of industrialization. There are, uh, there are volumes that are super interesting. And from here, we from there, we can conclude that, of course, comparatively, there are different financial systems also evolve, and they're different. And of course, there are institutional setups that differ. And therefore, uh, their role, the um, uh, the role of certain uh, financial agencies or certain financing policies will differ in a different context, which also affect, of course, the use of financing policies, let's say, for innovation. Um, oops. You have four, five more minutes, please. Thank you very much. Um, and here, uh, I'm back to my last slide. Um, if we say that there is also increasing public share or state's control over credit allocation that, for example, 20th century has witnessed, uh, there were a lot of credit, credit guidance policies whereby uh, strategic and conscious decisions were made on the part of um, uh, governments to channel uh, to channel credit particularly, but also other types of financing to prioritize sectors that will lead uh, to positive economic spillovers that will help to develop and industrialize, while at the same time taming uh, financing of less productive activities, such as let's say real estate, such as consumption. And nowadays, today, there are also a, a body of research emerging that says, well, we need precisely that for the green recovery because the extent of finance that is needed for low carbon innovation, for green innovation, well, the, the private sector can arrive at that point probably, but it might be and probably will be too late. So we need to use not necessarily post-World War II type of credit allocation policies, but we need to be mindful that the types of financing that is out there affect the types of uh, innovation activities that uh, happen and not always uh, private sector will be willing to invest in green innovation to the extent that is needed for the green transition to occur. And here this leads me to the point of financial bureaucracies, that this is an essential component of financing policies at the end. And here um, there are essentially a fundamental difference between let's say economic planners and the technocrats that design uh, R&D policies and the key financial bureaucracies, as I said, Ministry of Finance, central banks, supervisory authorities. Simply, this difference stems from simple fact that finance is essentially global. And we, uh, we allowed this and we build those institutional configurations in the past 20, 30 years that made it happen, made it so. And there, um, as, for example, Manuel was talking about that conflictual objectives or workings 
of national systems of innovation, sectoral, how to reconcile global uh, versus national uh, discretion to, to make policies. And here essentially is the same. Uh, how to, how to what, what are the you know, discretion and for rules making for uh, national financial authorities if the, the financial capital is essentially global. So countries at times start to competing, especially what we see in developing, in developing world um, for global institutional investors. Um, and another, I think, important conceptual point is just very similarly to how evolutionary take on innovation in um, organizational learning um, allowed us to produce um, research about um, learning in the context of innovation, but at the same, the similarly that happens within public bureaucracies, which are also organizations and there is organizational learning there. There is also learning from interaction between public bureaucracies and private sectors. And here, I think it's my last slide. I suggest that and here I go back to where I've started with a lot of uh, inspiration from ongoing discussion in the policy world globally, that how do we build back, back, build back better? How do we ensure that we have the right type of finance that will bring us that inclusive innovation-led, just transformative growth? Um, then maybe I suggest it would be appropriate to also talk about states as strategic investors and then to ask, well, what is that state-led strategic investment function that states can perform? And this can be defined, I argue, it can be defined by the state-led efforts to direct finance, both private and public, towards those innovation-inducing sectors and activities. And I argue that well, that comes from what I've said about financial governance, about the bureaucracies. We can look at this state-led function through a combination of variables. And these are the actors, the policies and bureaucracies. And here I have a kind of table where by actors, I talk about key public financial agencies, but also private actors that are subject to financial governance. There are also international or supranational actors, because of course uh, we have multilateral institutions, we have uh, global uh, and international um, organizations. And um, the state strategic investment function can be defined by the following policy outcome. Here I define it as directing financial capital into projects, technologies, with considerable positive externalities in terms of social and economic, technological, and climate-friendly progressive change. And in this sense, uh, what type of bureaucratic capacities are needed? Well, particularly, they need financial discretion or, or power to make strategic investment decisions, strategically defined operator sectors, technologies, and projects. Um, I think this is more or less the repetition of what I have said, um, that policies are not isolated from implement, implementing bodies, and that we need that blend of public policy and governance studies on one hand, and economics of innovation, monetary economics, that provide us complementary insights to understand how we can uh, shape our financing institution configurations that will help us to grow <laughs> Um, in a sustainable, green, and more just manner. So thank you very much. I think I'll stop there. I hope I didn't uh, overrun too much. Thank you very much, uh, Olga. Thank you very much, Manuel. OK, uh, okay. Uh, I, I was muted. So uh, Olga, it was an excellent exposition uh, your focus on financing uh, innovation, the role of institutions therein, and particularly contextualizing in the context wherein countries uh, across the world and people across the world are looking forward to the, the, the post-COVID strategies. 
and I just you could not have concluded better than uh, making the case for uh, uh, what is called a strategic state uh, role, you know, and, and of course it was echoing the entrepreneurial state term by Mariana Masucato. Very well said. And uh, now there are a few questions uh, came, but I'm sure uh, I would like to uh, read out the, those questions. But I don't want the speakers to answer. I think you know you can you can I think you know you your job was just to provoke. I would say, and we have got many senior scholars here, uh, and you are you are welcome to answer, of course. Uh, and we have many uh, senior scholars here. We have Bendoke here, and, uh, and I'm very happy that Bendoke is sitting through all these sessions, uh, 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 very uh, right from the beginning to end, from the uh, first lecture onwards. Well. Uh, uh, very happy to see you, uh, Val. Uh, and now, the first question, I think in some order, I would say, uh, uh, there is, uh, I thought, the question from, uh, I would say, not Veronica, before this question, maybe first we can answer, like, could someone uh, uh, kind of elaborate on, in fact, they already said it so, but uh, please could anyone clarify to all the students, what is the conceptual meaning of institutions in the NSI framework? And what is the connection between formal and informal institutions as potential barriers or leverages of interactive learning? So this is, uh, uh, I thought th there are other questions. I'll put them in order. This is perhaps, uh, uh, the starting point, perhaps. Uh, would would uh, you would like to come, or I I, I have I can right see better okay, cake here. Uh, they all have contributed. Nelson has contributed, and they all our founders of Globalis has enormously enriched us on this. And they, some of them are here. Our uh, Mamo is here. So would you like to? Why don't you take one minute each, two minutes each, responding to this? Manuel, would you like to respond to that? Because yeah, uh, well, then Mentoke could, could uh, add well, all his work. I'd say that uh, institutions are the, I mean, the setting and the organizations that generate uh, uh, capabilities, innovation, and diffusion in the framework of the national system of innovation. Uh, but of course, this is uh, the, the, the definition or, or the understanding of institutions is broad and there are different uh, tensions and uh, it depends on what are you trying to understand. In the case of, for example, Freeman, institutions uh, were a main uh, vehicle to understand history, for example, to, to, to push diffusion, for example, to, to, to build the setting for uh, the starting of a techno-economic paradigm. Uh, I mean, this is in the in the in, in this framework. But I would prefer perhaps Bentake is much more qualified. No, Olga also will have uh, a, a few minutes. After that, we'll go to or, uh, uh, Bentake and others. And I think everyone can contribute. Let's let, uh, this is the let, let us make it more lively. I think uh, Olga. Thank you very much, KJ. Well, I think we should dif di distinguish between uh, two. Um, things here. One, institutions are in terms of organizations and agencies, obviously, but there is a one, uh, one more connotation and institutions can be understood as, let's say, regulatory regimes, certain uh, arrangements of uh, customs, traditions, uh, those mechanisms that also, I mean, let's say coordination, uh, arrangement and structures that, uh, that, uh, uh, bond the organizations together or that define the interactions between organizations, between people, between whatever. So it's a very broad, but I would like to keep that, um, the two meanings of that word. I think both of them together gave a very a fairly good understanding of it. I think I might add one sentence, just to ask you to read uh, in the similar vein, uh, what uh, uh, Richard Nelson in his article would argue, suppose you are making the, you all must be familiar with, suppose you are taking the case of cake making, you have got soft institutions, you have the, what is called a recipe, you need to make a cake, also you need a oven to do that. So your hard institutions, and soft institutions. I think final word, final answer will be given by Bendoke. Or anybody else before Bendoke, anybody would like to step in? 
Okay, I think I will. I, I think uh, I think final answer. I think uh, Bender uh, Bal, would you please enlighten us, please? Yeah, let, let me first uh, comment uh, very very briefly the two presentations. Um, I think Manuel, I, I I didn't find almost anything where I would disagree, and I I think you pointed out uh, the very the most important. Uh, aspects of Chris Freeman's work. Uh, that was uh, a great presentation. And um, I also agree very, very much uh, with, uh, with Olga that uh, the financial uh, dimension of innovation uh, has not been uh, well uh, uh, represented in, uh, in the kind of work done uh, including in, in Global X. So I, I very much welcome um, that kind of, of work. I, I, I had one thought. I, I tried to write a uh, 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 chat comment, but it went off before I ended it. And um, it's, uh, I mean, one thing that could be interesting would be to compare uh, what's done in terms of state intervention in United States in China uh, when it comes to this uh, 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 global uh, competition on digital uh, artificial intelligence. Manuel, he, he refers to it too as 5G, but, but it could be quite interesting because uh, I think uh, the differences are, of course, quite uh, uh, big, but they're also, I will, I, I guess we'll find there are quite a lot of this, uh, similarities as well. So that, that's so far. Uh, institutions, I just want to add that uh, my colleague Bjorn Jonsson and Charles Edqvist, uh, they wrote a, a paper some time ago where they said, oh, is organizations are not institutions. Uh, but of course, in a sense, uh, it's, it's a distinction, uh, which is not so easy. I mean, uh, what is institutions among other things is uh, routines, uh, uh, kind of ways, uh, how people relate to each other uh, and, and things. And these are informal. And they are typically for, uh, formed in, by experience, education systems, uh, learning processes, etc. But, but the, many people would also in, uh, uh, talk about formal institutions as the financial system, including uh, how the banks work and so on. So, uh, uh, that's all for me now. I try not to talk too much. It's not so easy. Like uh, Joseph, you know the problem. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Vendokia uh, 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 and others, uh, and both uh, uh, speakers. Now, the next question I thought maybe later is, uh, Chandrasekhar is asking. Uh, my, his question is, so far as many developing con con countries are concerned, they are focusing, uh, they are equating innovation with R&D even today. In their policy matters, innovation is equal to R&D. Uh, and naturally then they go for giving R&D incentives, subsidies, uh, and for basically larger firms because they are more competent of doing that. Now, so how do we locate non R&D based innovations in the policy framework? Non R&D based you know, uh, innovation because is something which is very relevant. I, I think everywhere it is relevant because the DUI mode of learning, I mean, okay, this is the question. I don't want to answer, I think. Uh, so uh, 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 there is no compulsion for the speakers to answer. Right? There, there is no burden for you because there's, there's a lot of knowledge here. Mariana, you are here. I can see, right? Yanis, all of you are here. Mamo, <coughs> you're all, Gabriel. We're only, I mean, we are all free to answer. Do, I think we should not burden the speakers to answer. They, their job is just to provoke us. Then only it is lively because it's a, it's a crowdsourcing of knowledge. There's a forum for crowdsourcing I, of knowledge. I think Carlota is asking uh, 
the word. Okay. Who is going to answer? Carlotta. Carlotta, yeah, yeah, you are here. Oh, please. Yes. Oh. I'm here. I was listening in YouTube. So I want to first of all congratulate both Manuel and Olga for very, very solid and complex presentations that really, really brought out practically every possible aspect that we could uh, discuss. So, of course, I don't think we can discuss them all. But maybe if we look at your question, there is something that I have been finding for about 10 years now and almost being like a ritornello, I come all the time at this business that institutional innovation is as important as uh, any process, product, whatever, organizational innovation. And, and maybe institutional innovation is organizational innovation. It's innovation in individual policies. You, if you have, if you think of the welfare state, that was an enormous set of brilliant institutional innovations. You know, policies, ways of solving problems, ways of approaching, uh, as, as Ben Doko was saying, sometimes it has to do simply with the way people relate in certain roles. Uh, so we have to put our focus on these things because these are times of institutional change, of major institutional change. I don't know if you're acquainted with Hillary Cotton's attempt at talking about uh, welfare 5.0, you know, really, we need to rethink completely in the advanced countries, the welfare state, and in the developing countries, the methods for developing the, the institutions that can really help. For instance, I find today that uh, because technologies have changed so much, we now have the possibility of perhaps developing directly in the rural areas rather than bringing people into the cities or pushing people out of the countryside into the slums in the cities. All these problems that society has, the informal economy, all these things, maybe we can actually think of developing directly where people are. And that means we would need to have a whole, because we now have internet, so people could produce things and sell them through internet, maybe communities, cooperatives, clusters, all sorts of things. Well, our institutions of government are not used to dealing with these socially complex issues. They, they, you know, they sort of work in just the laws and the, and the context and banks and this and that, but not really organizational issues. So maybe we even have to think of government as a multi multi-organizational thing where you have different parts that are really focused on different aspects. And of course, all the, practically every single policy that has to do today with inequality, with environment, with the, the, all the really crucial issues of today need different policies. Our tax system is ridiculous. Everybody just thinks of whether you tax the rich more and the others. No, we need to think of a very complex tax system that will change incentives for finance, that will change incentives for individual investors, that will change things. The whole incentive system has to be changed. We have to, you know, like, like we tax cigarettes because they're bad, you know, the Pigovian type of notion. If we're going to do environmental things, we have to rethink that set. Maybe we have to introduce basic income. That's a whole new world of how do you handle welfare in a, in a way that really protects everybody truly and so on. You know, and of course, finance, like uh, Olga was talking about. I mean, there's a whole range of things in finance that have to be rethought. And development, as Manuel's uh, main focus and worry was, Development today is very different from our old import substitution model, but our institutions are still the same ones. You know, they've changed a little bit, but they haven't really recognized that we're in a different world with hyper-segmented markets, with all sorts of different things. So I would say institutional innovation has to be studied by innovation scholars. We don't know how it works. We don't know how it's decided, how, you know, we know a lot about the little curve and all these things of 
uh, the process and product innovations. Do we really know how institutional innovation happens? Do we understand how institutions change radically, just like products change? Do we have incremental innovations in institutions? Do we have radical innovations? How do they happen? We don't know this. Who's writing about this? I don't know. I'd like to, I'd like to know if anybody knows about people who are on this topic of institutional innovation as an object of study. So I don't know if that answers your question, but it certainly answers mine. No, I think I, I felt this was a, a, a really, uh, uh, I must say, illuminating uh, uh, response in the sense that uh, the catchword today is actually institutional innovation. I mean, I just add one sentence from the experience of my own state that I belong to in India, Kerala is head and shoulders above other regions in the country in terms of uh, human development or development in general, not because of we have got a space research institution in the, country, in the state, not because we do R&D, but because institutional innovations, in, in, innovations in the institutions, innovations in governance, how you know, the social reformers, how they brought about institutional innovation. I think, as you rightly said, this is a very, very rich area where our understanding at best remain rudimentary. I think you have to do a lot. I think, uh, thank you very much for this insightful intervention. So can I call out another answer, another question? It's slightly, this is uh, Luis Melo is uh, asking. Yes, it's a comment, but at the same time, a kind of question. But today, financialization of the non-financial sector has changed that feature. None of the others cited in the presentation has any work on the financialization regime of accumulation. That's what, uh, the, and he adds on uh, saying that, as well as the nature of the financial capital, you know, referring to Hilferding, uh, 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 has changed by the control of the global value chains by the largest financial industrial corporation of the world. I think uh, this is a very important, I think uh, uh, the, one of the articles recently, uh, Bendoke and Cecilia has contributed to uh, innovation development. They also actually uh, uh, highlight more or less the same dimensions like a different way, but the role of finance capital, you know, financialized capital is very important. Somebody can uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, reflect on this uh, observation. I'd appreciate. But what is the particular question? I mean, what is the, how the difference is? Basically, it's a comment. I don't think that it's basically, <laughs> it, when you talk about, it's a comment actually, you know, it's something which one has to really, when you talk about financing innovation, I think Olga, I think you can appreciate this feedback better than this comment better than anybody else. I think uh, the, the role of finance comment. capital, finance capital, because you talked about the role of politics there, you know, all this actually comes coming here in fact. Well, I guess just a little comment. Hilfelding is a very nice reference, but I mean, he also still talks about uh, the role that financial capital serves the industrial sector, industrial economy. I mean, it owns to the to the times and the age where when he was writing. So of course, um, uh, it would be great to you know Skype him in and share you know he listen his views on like you know on the state of affairs where we arrive today. But um, but I think the the a lot of studies on financialization, uh, of course, everyone familiar, but. I think it's also about the um, uh, financialization of industrial corporation. And here, Bill Azonik told us a great stories, right? About how the incentives for maximizing the shareholder value drives away even retained earnings that they use not for investments, but for driving the market prices of shareholder value. Yeah, Luis, I think I'm sure you can unmute and uh, uh, you can uh, kind of uh, contribute to our, enlighten us, your concern. Luis, please unmute yourself. Unmute, please, yeah. Uh, I think you are not it. No. Louis, no. can you raise, raise hand? Can you raise your hand, Louis? Yeah, yeah. Raise hand, yes. From the control room, we can manage it. 
unmute all <laughs> unmute all will be chaos no 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 so problem you can now you can now unmute please 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 unmute please, please unmute yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, now I'm saying, I, now I can speak. Okay. I just have some very no. power, very powerful I, person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I think that you all got, all got make the point because I think that Lazonic has a, a strong point about that. And that's what is occurring. What's the, the big pharma, especially in the pharmaceutical sector, because the big pharma is now buying every startup, unicorn startup, so on. And they are whole companies going to the uh, Wall Street uh, market. They they send they make uh, the IPO is, is being done. But after two years, that this this uh, startup they are not follow the the, the the initial trajectory. So I think that there's a huge connection between the the, the new accumulation, uh, the new regime accumulation, financial accumulation, and the innovation. And the structure of the sectors. That's my point. Just that, that's my point. I think that could be uh, more uh, emphasized in another meeting and so on, because uh, I think that the big corporation now, they are finance, finance capital, more than, than industrial capital. That's my point. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Gabriel. Hi, Gabriel, raise your hand so that. Uh so that uh, uh, Rajesh can make you speak. You have made some point, I suppose. Gabriel? Yeah. You can, Rajesh, you can Gabriel, mute yourself. Please unmute yourself, unmute. Gabriel. Yeah, Gabriel? Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Uh, I, I've got a question to Olga, and it is, uh, which is the perspective of innovation process in a world dominated by venture capital are unicorns, uh, which have very different times to evolution and to get innovation than they want to do. That is, venture capital and unicorns try to get the more money in the less, in the less time, but the innovation process is an evolution one and requires much more time than venture capital and unicorns uh, need. This is my point. Yeah. I, a question to Olga. Yeah. Thank you very okay. much. Um, thing is that I'm not a venture capital scholar, but I uh, my my thoughts on that would be, um, you know, the exit strategy matters, and there are some comparative studies that look at how startups, what do they do afterwards. Do they decide to exit through IPO and for that they might choose a foreign market? Let's say a very high tech incentive startups, uh, they exit through IPO in the United States uh, of America's markets, right? So the question is, okay, to which economy they actually contribute in the long run? At the same time, there are also um, cases or traditions, if you will, to exit through the merger and acquisition. So if you become a startup and you become a part of a bigger company, which let's say domestically owned and domestically located and have production capacities at home, I do believe that these dynamics allow you to also contribute to them, despite that the, li the lifespan of that startup was short. So I would not limit myself to looking at also only on the financing side. There is a lot of processes that happen afterwards, right? Okay. I think there's a related question, something related in the sense, maybe uh, perhaps Olga can try or anybody else. In develop, this is a question from Trina Fisanti. Um, in developing economy context, government takes a role in financing innovation through public procurement policies. How effective this scheme compared to a uh, financial institution? Um, this is, I, anyone can enrich. Andrew, uh, you have this question, is it related? In Latin America, there's a concept of institutional aid of institution. Can you, can, can you, I mean, you are here, right, right here, why don't you speak it out rather than I read it out? Yeah, please. 
this Andrew, yeah, please. I, it just, uh, I learned about uh, this organizational and institutional differentiation. It always is a little murky because all these organizations are very institutionalized and organizations are key in creating institutional structure. And in, in Latin America, there's an interesting concept, which is institutionally that, which seems to me to, especially in the public sphere, to bring these two uh, together. So we have the institutionally that for the system of innovation, which would bring together the organizations, especially the state and the, the, the legal and the regulatory framework um, in, a, in, in an interesting way. It is, it does make it very difficult when we try to make this distinction between organizations and institutions in Latin America to actually be understood. Um, but uh, it's certainly a space to talk about uh, in uh, this innovation for development and what development and then what institutions uh, driving what kind of innovation, like you said in Kerala, um, that's one kind of development. In El Salvador, we have uh, bad development that's uh, driven by, uh, you know, uh, some kinds of institutions. So uh, I just wanted to make that comment on the, the, the way things are looked at, at least my understanding um, in, in Latin America, this interesting combination. Okay. Yeah, there is another interesting question. I think maybe slightly difficult to, uh, I mean, very precise question. Institution, uh, this is by Temis, Temis Jen, I, I hope I, 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 I uh, pronounced it correctly. Please forgive me if I have done it wrong. Institution is the role of the game. So how do we measure it, whether it is a strong or weak? How do we measure institution? Hmm? How do we measure institution? I think. Wouldn't it be uh, by how successful they are at their aim? Outcome, outcome measure in terms of input measure. Carlotta, please um, unmute yourself, please. Didn't I? <laughs> I mean, I think institutions generally are understood as mm -hmm. for something, to do something. They have aims, they have goals. So I guess the simplest way to measure an institution is whether it achieves what it's supposed to achieve. So uh, the, that's not so easy, of course, <laughs> because sometimes what you, but there are obvious things like right now, we need to think development. I mean, sorry, employment. Yeah. We, have, we have had one wave of unemployment and unskilling, which is from ICT. And that's continuing and will continue. Then we have another one, which came from globalization, which created jobs in one side and destroyed jobs in the other. And the jobs it created in the other side, we have to see how, how much they might have affected the jobs that were already there. Then we have COVID, which has destroyed a whole lot of jobs. And now we have green. And we've got to do green in a way that does not destroy more jobs. It's going to destroy jobs anyway. I mean, if we reduce the oil industry, that's going to destroy jobs, oil and coal. We have all the populist movements in, in the advanced world responding to the resentment from the destruction of industries and all these things. So, uh, you know, we have big tasks ahead and they can be very clearly defined. So the institutions that will solve, say to take finance from short term to long term, we, we need instruments that will make it more important, more interesting, more profitable and more, uh, you know, more encouragement for long term finance and for funding the real economy instead of just doing the casino thing. So that's one world. Then, I mean, if we look at all the things that, that Manuel and, um, and Olga have been pointing out, looking at the institutions, they all have uh, a direction, a goal, something that they want to achieve. So I would say that's how you measure it. You just, you know what they want to do and then you see if they're achieving it or not. 
Bridget, uh, you would like to supplement uh, what Carlotta said? Bridget, are you are you able to hear me? Yes, again, you are all here. Please add to our. KJ, KJ, yeah. someone would like one one duels. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Uh, duels, can you speak? Please. Yes, I can. Please. Uh, I would like to explain my point of view when I talk about risk. Uh, of course, institutions uh, are the key subject to need to study, but. Uh, um, I work for all my life financing, uh, financing uh, projects, and uh, I I study very hard the subject. And in my opinion, uh, we need to see uh, the the risk of the projects if the sectors and uh, because the financial sector think like this the financing uh, theory uh, talk that we need to define the if you will go to finance or not if the risk are uh, mitigate by the guarantees and uh, of course uh, there are many different ways to finance and if you have a new sector uh, uh, that want to improve uh, improve something in the process and the product etc uh, you need um, to study the risk of this and make an institution to finance it because uh, or choose one to finance because uh, it's uh, it's quite impossible uh, for example here in brazil to bend this to finance uh, uh, entrepreneur is uh, he could f do this if he used uh, his uh, earnings to do that, but uh, normally they could not finance it if the earnings uh, permit. They will do, uh, but of course there are. Uh, financing fi uh, projects like infrastructure that are very important in Brazil to finance uh, that uh, uh, even the time uh, because I it was getting over 9.32 I never knew it okay please okay oh uh, you finish uh, uh, um, World Bank finance Project finance is that is a different way to finance things, things, um, and uh, the the small things need to have another type. It's not the same way we find we finance the things. So this discussion needs to, I think, go in a deep way mm -hmm. to understand better the subject. Yeah. Thank you. I think Sorry going well made. The, Good to see you, Dils. Yeah, take care. So I think there is a couple of I will. will I think we we'll take another five more minutes because it's only nine thirty. What nine thirty-five? Uh, sir, we don't have any time limit. So no, long no as time. people okay. are ready. Okay. Yeah. But ultimately, yeah, there should be at least one more person other than me here. Please, please go on. Rohan says. Rohan says recently in India. The controversy with the large corporate industrial houses, they're allowed to uh, act as promoters of banks, business uh, bank inter interlinkage. How has be, this been in East Asia? Any comments how financial innovation with respect to ownership of the banks? Uh, this is a question to Olga. Olga, you have anything to add on that? Just take a look at the chat. Sohan, where are you? 
Uh, thank you. I just, I wonder if Manuel want to jump in and then I can compliment because I think I don't want to monopolize the discussion. Manuel, also on VC, maybe you wanted to comment earlier. Yeah. Please, please go ahead, really. Yeah, no, I would like to make uh, one, my well, different uh, three points. One uh, has to do with uh, the comment of uh, Ventake and Carlota. I think that uh, this is interesting uh, and we should understand the institution or the institutional transitions in the line of, well, Freeman and also Carlota. For example, uh, now nowadays in with the 5G debate and the, the, the diffusion of the 5G uh, infrastructure, we have a, a new building of regulations, of standards, of a, a different um, institutions that have to be built, and they are building, they are being built, and mainly they are me, being built by uh, the US and by China. Uh, so the, the, the global South have to, to, to think in, in these transitions building their own institutions. This is a one, one, one point, and in, in, in conceptual terms, I would reinforce the approach of uh, Carlota and Freeman on the idea of transitions institutions. For example, uh, the transition from for, uh, 3G, 4G to 5G in, in, in the Global South is not even discussed in, in, in our uh, um, public sphere. So this is one point. Uh, then, with respect to BC and financing, well, in, with Olga and Choa, we are in a uh, uh, conducting a special issue in, in, on innovation and development. Uh, on this issue, we understand that this is really a key issue. But in, in particular, uh, with respect to uh, BCs and startups, I think that there is a really a difference between, for example, the US and the Global South. In the case of the US, um, this dynamic of uh, merger and acquisitions is even inside of the of the business model of the startups. I mean, startups in some cases are created to be in sold or to be in, uh, sold or to be acquired by a bigger company or to go for a, an, an IPO. But I think that the problem comes in the in the global south that when we want to develop some kind of of this type of financing, we have different problems. For example. The, we cannot go for a local I, IPO because our our markets are not uh, deep and the startups uh, usually go for the IPO in the Nasdaq. So the, uh, we, in some sense, we share the ownership and the capabilities of the local uh, startups. At the same time, the, the government, and in the case, for example, what uh, Dulce was uh, speaking, the Benedes and Criatec and Finep has uh, put a lot of money to develop the, the venture capital industry in Brazil. A lot of money. The, uh, the thing, uh, perhaps, is that um, this, uh, in the sense of uh, Luis was pointing out, then these startups are being acquired by a multinational or uh, they are being sold abroad. And these have an issue there. For example, Israel is a good case in the sense that they, when, when the state put money in a startup and it is sold for, uh, for, a, for, for a foreign country, the IP, the intellectual property is, being, is uh, getting back to the state. This could be a, 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 an answer for, for this issue, but this is an open issue, a, an, an open discussion. Uh, and I think that this particularly affects the global South countries when they want to develop this type of new financing that we have little re resources, little startups and little uh, develop uh, financial markets. So we, we, we experience some kind of extra foreign, foreignization of the IP of the entrepreneurial capability and so on. Uh, well, this is my, my comment. Um, you thank did, you very much. Thank you, uh, Manuel. Uh, very good. And now let me, let me, uh, Judith, are you here? You are here, I suppose. I'm not, I'm able to see you. Judith, hello. Could you please unmute and uh, join us? What do you want me to say? You, on I, any aspects, there's a lot of questions here. We are, we are totally, all are totally ignorant. And this is the most complicated subject in terms of role of institution in innovation. You know, it is, you, I'm I, sure you will have Okay, I am going to say the same I, I said in our former session. Mm -hmm. It is uh, uh, 
in Brazilian time, uh, in, in any time, two hours, 10 minutes since we started. And you are asking me the more complex question at that time. And I, I ask you to have pity of me and pity of all of us. And I promise that uh, we come back, we shall come back to these questions. We shall come back to development. We shall come back to Chris Freeman, yeah, yeah. to interdisciplinarity, to a lot of very, very controversial issues. I promise that to you. But uh, I think that this is a good time to say goodbye to okay. all of us right. and digest the very, very fascinating discussion we have today. Yeah, I think, um, I think, uh, I think let, us, let us remain uh, 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 uninformed. I mean, remain uh, kind of, let's not claim that we know everything so that we can continue again. So uh, with these words, I, uh, I congratulate the speakers. I uh, appreciate all those who have participated, particularly, I know all of you, I, I don't want to say, and of course, Bal is very much my friend. And I, uh, I, think, I, I think his energy and enthusiasm and his spirit, in fact, uh, uh, that, is, uh, that is very much a, a source of inspiration for all of us. And all my friends, all our friends, uh, I think particularly two of our end colleagues, uh, Manuel and Olga, Olga and Manuel, doing for such a wonderful job. And of course, Rajesh, uh, Rajesh is uh, truly a good organizer, Rajesh. And Veronica and all our teams. And I mean, I don't want to continue. If I continue, you may not get your, uh, it will be going too late. So uh, over to the organizers, Rajesh or anyone for the final word. Thank you very much uh, for involving me in the whole thing. Thank you. I request Veronica to, to announce the next lecture. Yes, please. Um, the next lecture will be, uh, let me, uh, one minute, please. I, I will share again screen so we, we can see all the information there. No, I'm sorry. I think it's OK. You can read. If you don't have, I can also read out, no problem. Uh, yeah, please. If you don't read. have the material, I can read out. Yeah, I, I don't have it here, please. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. I'm sorry. Today we had a very fascinating, equally fascinating discussion. Uh, I think uh, uh, from next lecture onwards, we can continue uh, such sort of a, a highly interactive uh, 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 sessions. Yeah, here comes, here comes Veronica. Yes, here it is. Uh, the next question, the Professor uh, Franco Malerva will be the chair of the session. And uh, uh, Dr. Hesor Mac Kundi, the University of Dar es Salaam uh, from Tanzania, will be in charge of the lecture on different approaches to national system of innovation. Uh, the session, the next session will be on uh, 19 February uh, at the same time, uh, a different link that uh, Rajesh will share us to all of us. So please uh, join us uh, to the next session. Uh, I don't know if uh, you want to add anything, Rajesh, or it's fine. Nothing, nothing. If you can bring down the screen sharing, can. we can let all say hi and, you know. Let us give it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Can you bring, bring hand down? to yeah. our yeah. organizers. That's it. Yeah. Unmute yeah. yeah. all. Thank you bye very bye. much, really. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Nice to see you. Bye bye. bye. Congratulations, bye. Manuel. Bye. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Manuel. Bye. Thank you, Olga. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. I think all of you can unmute and say something. <laughs> Now only you allow others to speak. It's nice seeing you all. <laughs> yeah. Kindly unmute and say something. Say bye bye. See you next week. See you next week. See you all next week. Thank you. Right. KJ, thank you very much. This was yeah, an excellent yeah. sharing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, thank yeah. you very much. Yep.
it's a very lively day and uh, a pleasant Thank face you. good to see you so, yeah thank you very hindu teacher undallo yeah yeah <laughs> hindu is the hindu is my technical hand technical hand don't tell that. yeah yeah <laughs> gender people will put you into trouble if she is <laughs> no no she is she is handling all the technical matters oh very good very good okay congratulations i think come yeah very well and now now kj please don't leave uh, andrew we mm -hmm. had a we had a program i mean a, a small discussion with andrew planned mm -hmm. yeah. so once yanis how are you yanis i i sent you a message uh, you didn't see it uh, it's and my i is pity that i am not in touch with you all the best hope you are doing well we'll be in touch we must be in touch i'll send you a separate mail Okay. Do we need to schedule another meeting? We can actually we can do that also. Andrew, Rajesh, yeah. we can schedule another meeting. No, we can. We three we can schedule yeah. over even 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 WhatsApp. Yeah, it's, up. it's up to Andrew. Yeah, it's up to Andrew. I'm, I can send you a WhatsApp. I can I can send you a. talk now but depends on your convenience yeah tomorrow i think how we can uh, maybe i i send you a zoom link to one of these days which way uh... mamo how are you mamo ji <laughs> he's not there <laughs> that's I what i called him mamo ji <laughs> he gave some inspiring words and left let's <laughs> see mama uh, mama please uh, mama ji how are you he is he is yes no ah great man great dada <laughs> how are you you stop talking only right only only messaging <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, uh, so. You have to unmute yourself, Mama Ji. Okay. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's yeah, right. Now I now. Okay. Can... Lovely to see you. Ah, Hello. great to see. You. Right. Hi there, Mama. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm very Greetings. fine. And you? El Salvador. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. Uh, we're missing uh, seeing each other in 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 person. Uh, yes. But, uh, this is, uh, Andrew, we are seeing a long time. Yes. Institutional. <laughs> where are you now, Andrew? Now, where are you now? Innovation here. Yeah, Andrew, where are you placed now? You are in El Salvador. Where, where are you now? Andrew, Myself? me, I'm in. I'm in South Africa. Yeah, you are. Everywhere. Andrew, where are you? You are everywhere. I'm in Central America. I'm in El Salvador I, for the moment. I should I should and, be in uh, parallel. Looking, looking to uh, to get out to to see more of the world as I'm in a in a labor okay. transition. Uh, so, I see. My uh, KJ doesn't. Eh? My brother KJ doesn't take me back to Kerala. I don't. I don't know what I'm going to do to him. <laughs> 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 my my KJ, can I send the paper? I'm a bit late. It's still. the special issue what happened to you you were not responded at all you were too busy no 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 can i send can i send it you still are you able to i can send it uh, this week this coming week yeah for okay you. okay thank you <laughs> for you our doors are always open <laughs> <laughs> i have a big trouble i want only one <laughs> issue i have to for two issues and my publisher <laughs> i have more the issue at submission for more than two issues i'm in big trouble but you know for you with you i have no i have no no in my dictionary unfortunately <laughs> you are yeah, great you are very kind in fact you 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 Absolutely. wanted to unmute him and you he didn't know that was coming did you <laughs> yeah. anyway so we'll manage but it's great to see you i uh, it's good this thing Rajesh has done a great job. This yeah, just how he did. Yeah, yeah. I remember in the beginning I was discussing with him, but how he did it—the <laughs> way he implemented it—was incredible. 
Yes. We're, dis we're discussing about how what to do with uh, for Chris Freeman or this. Remember, we had these annual lectures with uh, yeah. India Leaks, remember? Huh? But it was difficult to continue it. But somehow, you know, India Leaks is the problem. I see the point is that in India, Chris Freeman is very difficult to sell. It's not a really saleable uh, product in India. In, for Globalix, Chris Feynman is saleable. If how many people from India joined in the discussion? Maybe three, four, five. That's it. So Chris Feynman is a saleable product in the Globalix community. Not so much. I in see. India. I see. Yeah. See, we have nothing much to do with. I mean, with, with of course, he was behind the science policy research. You know, uh, Center for Science Studies and Science Policy. I know Ashok Parsad was yeah. influenced by him and all. But beyond that, yeah. Yeah. he has no direct impact. That way, only indirect impact. The Sussex mining I see. I see. It is. Many people are, in fact, uh, that is why I thought this is the ideal way, but uh, that, you know, you know his yeah. public community is to be addressed, not uh, India League's community. For yeah. This wonderful. Thing. Okay. That's very wonderful. But when are we going to see you, Andrew? Andrew. <laughs> but but uh, KJ, I always see him. I virtually see him. Yeah. He ran an excellent conference the other day. The other day, about uh, with the finance minister and everything. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That we are going to bring it out as a book. Or now it's, we have a small yeah, publication in my my yes. institute. I have one publication. Is it's a monthly publication. Just I started on Kerala economy. Okay. Very this good. is going to have a special wow. issue. And I will have a book. Uh, something like this. this is a recent one which came out on. Uh, that's interesting. This is another book which we have brought out. Similarly, we are going to bring out with your photo will be here, okay? Mama? Yeah. Your photo will your photo will be here, okay? <laughs> this is a format. This is a format. I think make it close to you. It, it must be close to my KJ. <laughs> my brother KJ. <laughs> uh, Andrew wasn't there. He, he was not invited. Andrew. Andrew was no, no. I was only, I was only, I was only inviting the usual suspects, because <laughs> the, long, the, the global league suspects. <laughs> so it went on from eleven o'clock. Poor my minister was sitting through at, at eleven thirty at, at night. Throughout he was sitting. He didn't want to leave. He was very. He want. He now wants to come to Costa Rica. He said, "I'm coming." So he's very excited with the community. <laughs> wow! 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 He wants to come to Costa Rica. <laughs> In do, fact, do you yeah, think Costa Rica it will happen? Do you think the this coronavirus is not going? Do you think it I will happen? Oh no, whether who will travel, how we will travel, totally uncertain. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, uh, whatever. Anyway, if everything goes well, I will do a uh, global X year next year because <laughs> <laughs> next we will repeat 2006 year because. But I but think, but uh, but I KJ, I, I just want happen. to ask you. The, the remember uh, India had created a vaccine and South Africa got it. Once they got it, they say it does not uh, it does not help. Why? The, the, they said it's they, they couldn't believe in it. Why? They rejected it. You I think you must be behind it. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Why would I want Covaxin? I... Covaxin is supposedly good, I suppose, but we have <laughs> Indian no, vaccine. No, I was I was shocked when I was informed. I thought I thought India. I South Africans need Africa. all our car, all our trucks, no vaccine. Why? And all your paracetamol and all comes from here. Why? Why? Why they can't take it? What happens? <laughs> really? It is. There's a news like that. There's a news. It's not effective. You have to unmute yours. Unmute, please. Mamoji, unmute. Unmute. Uh, he's talking. Unmute. Yes, now I can do it. Ah, no. It's okay now. <laughs> no, I was just looking at uh, Rajesh. And he's lovely to see both of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And she is my daughter's. Uh, she is my daughter's. Yes, she's. I, I saw her. I was so happy. <laughs> Mamo, Mamo. She is my daughter. She Mamo. Hello. Uh, Indu is uh, my teach. My daughter's teacher. My daughter. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's Please. amazing. How is your daughter? How is your Actually, daughter? Actually, I was not able to uh, speak because Rajesh was not unmuting me. 
Okay. I'm trying to unmute and he is. <laughs> No, Being Jesus. the host, he is not muta, unmuting me. <laughs> I'm sorry about the <laughs> delay. <laughs> so right now I terrified him. See, better you unmute me or else <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm so I'm so happy. I'm meeting my Kerala family. Ah, I have both. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Same here. We are also really honored. <laughs> Lovely to see you. <laughs> How are the children? They are fine. They are doing well. Both are fine. Both are fine. Yeah, very good. Well. Even, even KJ's daughter is also very, very nice. I, no, I met she, her. She both are nice. not here. This is my tragedy. I want to get them back. She, yeah. she, she is now working for Cargill Foods. Very good. Very good. And, I, 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 and my doubt, son, both are not here. It's very, very terrible. It's not, not at all. Oh, yeah. yeah, I understand. I have the same problem. I just hate that. Mine are in India too. Your daughter is in. Where is she now? In Linda, in London, London, not in India, in London. She was in Bangalore, but I couldn't yeah, meet her at that time. She couldn't come to Toronto. Very complicated. Very complicated. But it's great to see you, and uh, I'm I'm glad you gave me the permission. So I, I send you the paper. Yeah, please. And also the, I, is it okay to? I'm editing the the one you sent me, for the book, with the pictures. <laughs> you send me the. I'm going to edit it. You have Can you hear me? Did you get uh, the transcribed? Can you hear me? No, no. Did you get the transcribed version of what you spoke there? Hello? Uh, Did you get the transcribed version? Sorry, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you get the transcribed version of what you spoke in, to, in our meeting? Yes. You, yes, I will I'll send it, but I will add a few things. You elaborate on that and. Uh, okay, the, I'll send it to you. You forgot? I'll send, I'll send uh, that one this weekend. Well, yeah, weekend is fine. Okay, fantastic. I'll, I'll send it to you. That one and the paper. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so but it's anyway. We Andrew, please say something. <laughs> well, we just, took uh, we took a long I, time I, the other way. <laughs> just uh, saying, yes. uh, hi here and, and uh, waiting for for KJ uh, to to. To have some time here to talk about uh, uh, maybe getting to Kerala uh, after being very interested in this uh, place for many years. Um, Most welcome. Uh, we can I can host you in our institute. It's not a problem. Uh -huh. I'd be very happy to welcome you here. Yeah, no, it's uh, we were talking with uh, uh, Rajesh about uh, some some interesting uh, issues and collaboration. Uh, turns out that my uh, work in, in small-scale innovation and small-scale agri-industry had to do in the first case with uh, cashews, um, which I know is very big in, uh, in Kerala, both uh, in the past, the growing, and now continuing with the, uh, with the, uh, with the processing uh, and also we were talking about the